uh, example of cooling water supply and cooling water return. So what we have here, the same dash line point, dash point line to represent the battery limits. We have in this case the identification of the fluid. It's not necessary if you have the identification of the pipe here and the identification of the pipe most often you have the nominal pipe size of the line you have the fluid you have the number of the units you have the sequential number of the line you have the material of the pipeline in some cases if you have insulation you also add that to the uh, pipe numbering and we have a uh, isolation valve here as it is water there is no big concern so there is no double blocking bleeds no uh, drain for oily system and of course there is no vent to flare so there is only one isolation valve a drain valve and a figure eight and as you as i told you the white part represents that the figure with eight is opened and as battery limits to make sure that the supply complies with the requirements in the contract we have the measurement of pressure measurement of temperature measurement of flow and in many cases when we are using uh, gas when we are measuring gases we do the compensation of the measurement the cooling water return we have the same arrangement or very similar arrangement with the dash point line to represent the battery limit the identification of the fluid now it's return we have the isolation valve drain valve and now we have only the temperature and pressure and we don't have the flow measurement and why we don't have the flow measurement because a only water system is a closed loop system so it's not expected that you lose flow during this process. What happens is that you will receive the cooling water at a required pressure and temperature. It will uh, change temperature with the system and it will increase the temperature and you will decrease the pressure because you have a pressure drop of your system and this is important just to a matter of verification of the efficiency of the system if the pressure differential pressure increases too much it means that you have some obstruction in your heat exchangers for instance and if your temperature decreases too much you have you can have also some kind of inefficiency in the equipment and they needed to be cleaned so that's why uh, it's interesting to have the pressure and temperature in the return size for uh, evaluation of the efficiency of the equipment every time that you receive a utility or a gas stream or any stream that you receive at your plant make sure that you have a system of measurement at as close as possible to the better limits.